Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to showcase how the Plasma Caster works, which mods are worth buying, and also how you could get it yourself. Well, let's start with the very last one, and this is the first that you need, of course. So if you don't know how to get the Plasma Caster, basically you need to do the main storyline of the game. This is one of the endgame rewards in that part, and at the end you will unlock Vault 79, which has this uh, goddamn huge gold repository. And on the left, you're gonna see this guy named Rex. As you can see, I already know the plan because I bought every single one except one. The Plasma Caster is gonna be 750 golds, for which I recommend to keep all the gold yourself that you get from the main quest, as it's quite an expensive item. And you will see that you have these mod kits for it. Shut up, Rex. So this Allied Sniper Barrel, which is 150, the Calibrated Capacitor, which is 200, so is the Pulse Capacitor, the True Capacitor, and the one that I haven't bought yet, but I'm about to, is the uh, True Long Barrel. There we go. I now have all the plans available for a Plasma Caster. So, before we jump into crafting the actual weapon itself, there is one more step that you need to know before you get into it. As you might or might not have heard uh, from the Berkeley Spring Station, Murmurg has moved over to the Rusty Pick. And we need to stop by to pick up something from her, which is the... Legendary modules. Now, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure you can only get 10 at a day, so this is a daily reset. I'm gonna just go ahead and buy all 10 actually, because now the legendary modules are much more valuable than they were before. As you cannot craft a non-legendary variant of the Plasma Caster, at least there isn't any way that I know of. Instead, you can spend two legendary scripts, or sorry, not scripts, uh, modules per crafting to get yourself a legendary variant that ranges from 1 to 3 star and of any legendary effect basically. So it's not a guaranteed one, you might get a really bad one and you might get the god roll one, but every time you craft Plasma Caster it's gonna be legendary and it's gonna cost you two legendary modules. Okay, before we actually start and uh, craft the weapon itself, I would like to point out a few more tips. If you go into your perk loadout, as you can see there is the science which you need to actually craft the weapon, the Science Master, which should actually decrease the uh, requirement materi required materials for the weapon, but this, as I saw, didn't work. So it's the same material amount that it, re that it requires to craft uh, with and without the perk. And there is the Science Expert, which actually gives you a better durability for your weapon. Now, I didn't test if this was actually working, but you know, it's useful to have these on just in case. If you equip the um, Super Duper perk, you can have the chance to craft two of the weapon. So once you go into the workbench, you're gonna find the weapon under the energy guns tab. As you can see, Plasma Caster. And you don't get freaked out that this is the, you know, the symbol for the weapon itself. As you can see, there is the legendary module that you need to craft it. I already used one, just to try it out. And yes, every time you're gonna get a maximum level for your character. So, you know, if you are level 30, I think you can get a level 30 variant, but other than that, most of you are going to be probably over level 50 when you craft this, so you're going to get a level 50 variant. And it's going to have a random legendary effect as I said. So let's go ahead and try crafting one. And when you craft it, you don't see what sort of a weapon you got. So you're going to have to quit out every time. Yeah, it's a bit of a tiresome work. This was my first that I got a 3 star assassins with the better reload, which wasn't that bad. Now I got an exterminator with, uh, again, 3 stars and... Not bad effects, but you know, the exterminator is not too good. So I'm gonna go ahead and craft a few more, just to see if I can get, say, a bloodied or a junkies one. And then we'll uh, move on to actually the mods of the weapon. I was lucky enough to get myself a bloodied plasma caster, with a 3 star, even though the stars themselves aren't that good. I think it's uh, bashing damage and, yeah, faster movement speed while aiming. But still, it's a bloodied plasma caster, so I can compare it to my bloodied gatling gun, which I think uh, this weapon is the closest to in terms of performance. And also, as you can see, I did get two and even one star variants, so there is definitely the chance for you to get those, but thankfully most of the time I managed to get myself three star variants. So anyway, let's move on to the mods. First of all, you can get the true capacitor, which is gonna increase your hipfire accuracy, the carry rate capacitor, which is gonna increase your critical shot damage, and the pulse capacitor, which reduces the damage, but it is gonna drain your enemy power armor batteries, which as you might or might not have seen, there are now power armored enemies in the game. Still, I wouldn't recommend using this at all. I would probably go for the true capacitor, since this weapon uh, fires kind of slowly, so you want to get yourself uh, as good of uh, accuracy as you can with it. So let's put it on. 
Then we have the standard barrel, which can be switched out to the true long barrel, and the aligned sniper barrel. If you remember this one, this was the kind of New Vegas look for the weapon, which is kind of nice. This gives you more range, improves recoil and hipfire accuracy, while this gives you only the hipfire accuracy and no recoil. But again, we don't really need the recoil rejection for this weapon, so if you only care about that one, then just go for the true long barrel, which I'm gonna showcase right now. Then you can get the standard sights, which or there aren't any mods for it so far. And there apparently is coming a black skin for it, uh, or a darkened one, on the Atomic Shop due to the data mines, so we'll see how that works. So let's compare it uh, right away. And this is how the attachments compare. I'm assuming that you're gonna use the true capacitor anyway, so I put that on and then also slapped on the aligned and the uh, true barrel each, just so that you can see the difference. There isn't much of a difference between the aligned and the true barrel, let's be honest here, so I think you would be fine with either of those. Now, actually testing the weapon recoil itself based on the aligned and true barrel difference. This is the recoil with the aligned barrel. As you can see, it's not that noticeable at all. I basically could fire it at the exact same spot over and over again. As you can see, there is barely any recoil here either, so... As I said, the difference between the aligned barrel and the true barrel isn't really that noticeable at all. It basically just boils down to your preference in terms of looks. Another interesting thing to note is that unlike the Vault 94 raid rewards, you can actually script these weapons if you don't like the effects that you've gotten from them at the legendary exchange machine, which is nice. Because otherwise they would just clutter your inventory, since as you might or might not have known, you cannot drop any of the new items from the endgame weapon rewards. It's gonna say, you know, it's gonna be destroyed if you drop them, so you don't wanna drop them. So be sure that you get the plans and the weapon itself for the character that will actually use them, because you cannot, you, there is no way to transfer them from one character to the other. By the way, the weapon is using plasma cartridges just so that uh, I clear that one up. So, with Expert Heavy Gunner, Heavy Gunner and Master Heavy Gunner on, also Bloody Mess, but without Nerd Rage, this is how the weapon performs in below 20% uh, health threshold. As you can see, 361 energy, 361 uh, ballistic damage, which is nice. The fire rate is 20, which is not that big, but if you think about it that the um, Gatling gun has a, f a fire rate of 500, you can see that it's kind of inaccurate for this weapon. But anyway, this weapon does 409 damage, which is actually worse when you add it up. But, you know, as energy and ballistic damage resistance for enemies kind of add up weirdly, it's actually better to compare the damage numbers themselves between the enemies. Right now we got ourselves a Super Mutant Overlord, Super Mutant uh, Warlord and all that stuff. I think it's safe to start with the Warlord, even though I'm probably gonna die, but let's just get him uh, get in a body shot. So 266 at uh, that guy's torso. And now switching over to the Plasma Caster. I missed. 383. Which is much better. It's almost, well not twice, but one and a half times the damage. I'm gonna try to uh, get in some point blank shots as well, because of course there is the damage fall off in this game. I now have equipped the stabilized perk, which is ignoring armor, 45% of the armor. Point blank rage with the bloodied gatling gun. 503. Remember, 503 on that one. 686. That's still outperforming it by a long mile. And of course the Gatling gun is hit scan, while this isn't. But still, that's that's a lot of damage difference right there. And even though, you know, this is shared damage, I can just pretty much one-shot this guy if I'm lucky. Almost. And actually, I did one-shot it, it just... The game was slow to catch up. So, you know, without sneak attack criticals, I can one-shot a Super Mutant Warlord up close, which is really good. And I don't even have Nerd Rage on, which would boost my damage even further. So yeah, this is a really, really good endgame weapon for heavy gunners. I really can only recommend getting this as soon as you can. So yeah, that was my review of the Plasma Gatling. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.